Would we have advance warning if a nuclear war was about to start? Many people in North America rely on the nuclear alert system to notify them if an attack was imminent. But are there other indicators that might signal that we are on the cusp of nuclear Armageddon? There is doubt about the government's transparency when it comes to notifying the public of an impending nuclear disaster. This is because the government's central priority in this type of situation would be the continuity of government and to ensure that the logistics required to implement a continuity of government plan weren't impeded by mass public panic. So the question becomes, what might we see in the run-up to World War III? Today we're going to talk about warning signs that you're likely to see in the run-up to nuclear war so you can get a jump on things before the mass panic ensues. So let's get to it. In the 1980s, the Soviet KGB initiated Project Ryan. Ryan was an acronym for Raketro Yerdeno Nepadine, translated into Nuclear Missile Attack. Between 1981 and 1989, the foreign intelligence branches of the Soviet KGB and the East German Ministry of State Security launched a combined effort to develop a system for detecting signs of impending Western nuclear first strike. This was intended to be an early warning system and constituted one part of the Soviet response to the perceived threat of a surprise decapitation strike by NATO's nuclear forces. In this extensive, now declassified Cold War document, the Soviet KGB outlined all of the activities surrounding political, financial, military, and civil defense institutions that might indicate that the US government was preparing for a nuclear first strike. Of course, in the modern day, technology has changed and some of these indicators may not be as relevant as they were in the 1980s. But from this list, we may be able to extrapolate what some of these signals might be and apply this to our emergency preparedness planning. Item 1.3, increase in protection for leading US politicians and government institutions. This would be done to ensure the continuity of government after an attack. Item 2.2, Evacuation of people close to the highest political leadership of the United States from areas of increased risk on U.S. territory and in foreign countries. In this case, you might see high-ranking politician moved away from places that would be primary targets of a preemptive nuclear strike. Item 2.3. The taking of information to the U.S. National Archives to guarantee preservation of the most important government documents. Item 2.5. Relocation of the most important people from leading U.S. government agencies to places especially equipped for their work under warlike conditions. These might be to facilities like Cheyenne Mountain or the Raven Rock Complex, or other deep underground military installations that are still classified to this day. Item 3.3. Changes in political activities of U.S. embassies in the NATO states. If the embassies are being vacated or the envoys are being moved to civil defense structures, that's a telltale sign that something just ain't right. Item 1.1.3, the arrival of former US presidents in Washington. Item 1.1.6, the parking of a large number of vehicles used by official people at the parking lot of the White House at the area adjacent to the White House. This was actually something that was in the Ryan report. It is presumed that this abnormal amount of traffic combined with the other criteria laid out on this list, might indicate a negotiation about nuclear escalation. Item 1.1.5, simultaneous presence of most members from the National Security Council and special crisis groups in Washington. The concentration of these groups in one place might signal that continuity of government planning was in full effect. Nowadays, of course, these types of communications can be done remotely. Item 1.2.3, Simultaneous and unexpected leaves from receptions, dinners, balls, and business meetings by government officials. This might indicate a mass redirection to nuclear protective shelters. Item 1.2.5, the intensification of work in government agencies involved in preparations for decisions about the nuclear missile attack. This might also include employees working evening hours, Sundays, and holidays around the clock that might be indicated by parking a larger number of vehicles than usual near administrative buildings. Item 1.2.7, a significant increase in anti-Soviet propaganda and the unleashing of a war hysteria. 
It's safe to say that right now with all that is going on in the world, that war hysteria is absolutely at an all-time high with respect to the perception of Russia. Item 1.3.1 – Limitation of access to the White House This might indicate that mass preparations are underway. Item 1.3.4 – Increased security for leading members of the State Department and the Federal Departments This might signal that the government is expecting mass panic and thus people who are considered VIPs who needed to be taken to safe locations would be provided with a higher security detail. Item 2.5.1 Preparation for potential evacuation routes Increase of police activities on roads where evacuation is supposed to occur. This might involve the unusual coordinated shutdown of major corridors across the United States. This is to ensure that military and civil defense logistics can flow unimpeded. This also might be a way of getting ahead of the mass exodus from the cities that would likely ensue once the emergency alert system became activated. Item 3.1.2 Unexpected appearances by US government leaders in capitals of NATO states without announcement in the press or after advanced information. It's important to reiterate that this Ryan report emerged before the advent of the internet. So many of these indicators might present themselves in a virtual form today. Item 3.2.8 The sending of urgent messages of the type Whiskey by the most important military leaderships of NATO that might facilitate the asking of permission for the use of nuclear weapons. Item 3.3.1 The activation of operations of US embassies, exit of employees from US institutions under various pretexts, and the destroying of documents in the embassy. This absolutely would be a telltale sign that things were about to escalate if you've seen diplomats fleeing the embassies of their adversarial countries. Item 1.2 The rising of the level of combat readiness for the strategic offensive forces of the United States. This might take the form of priming intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear submarines, self-propelled artillery, and bomber planes. Due to the full-spectrum surveillance afforded by modern information technologies, most modern conflicts will be initiated while cloaked as exercises, as was the case with the onset of the current Ukraine-Russian conflict. Item 1.4 Moving American military objects abroad to higher levels of combat readiness. Item 2.2 an increase in the level of combat readiness for England's nuclear forces. Item 2.3 An increase in the level of combat readiness for France's nuclear forces. Item 1.2.2 The termination of regular technical maintenance and scheduled work at launching pads and missile command centers. 1.3.4 Increase in protection and defense of nuclear ammunition stocks as well as the units in possession of those nuclear weapons. You may see a heightened sense of security around nuclear facilities. Item 1.3.7 The appearance or numerical increase of aircraft of the Strategic Air Force as well as aircraft carriers from the Tactical Air Force at Air Force bases where they had not been observed previously. This means that you would see higher concentrations of bomber planes, very similar to what we've seen at Engels Air Force Base recently before it was attacked by a Ukrainian drone. Item 1.3.14 The replenishing of stocks in submarines for material and technical supply norms for war times, which is typically 90 days. This would be a telltale sign that we were going to war. This year, one of England's nuclear submarines set a record for the longest deployment at five months under the sea. Item 1.4.3 Preparations for the mass emergency distribution of ammunition, food, and fuel. Item 1.4.6 The distribution of personal protective gear against weapons of mass destruction, that is, hazmat suits, gas masks, gloves, all of which can endure chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear attacks. Item 2.1.10 National control and takeover of commercial communication networks. Again, this is pre-internet. It's very likely that this might take the form of emergency alerts being sent out to people's electronic devices. Item 2.4.1 Military units and forces in the state of increased readiness are kept in garrisons or military training areas under the pretext of conducting exercises. 
The Soviets were looking for large concentrations of American forces simultaneously conducting exercises. Item 1.3.1 An unusual amount of activity surrounding satellites, space apparatuses, and space transportation. Item 1.3.2 Increased activity of surveillance aircraft and unmanned intelligence devices. Item 2.1.5 The intensification of monitoring of Soviet citizens. Today, this would be the intensification of monitoring of Russian citizens. Item 2.1.7 In addition to the limitation or outright restrictions imposed at embassies, there might be additional travel restrictions for USSR representatives. Item 2.3.2 Declines of permissions for foreign diplomats and journalists to travel to areas where military objects are located. Today, this might take the form of enhanced restrictions on the media at or around these critical military installations. Item 2.4.1 Change of secret codes and ciphers of government and military institutions. A sudden change in the communication code utilized might indicate that they were preparing to protect these lines against eavesdropping from the Russians. Item 2.5.7 the cancellation of amateur radio licenses for the territory of the United States. They would likely want to keep these channels as open and uncongested as possible. In terms of civil defense preparations, item one was the immediate preparation for a nuclear missile attack. This should go without saying. Item two, a notice of measures to prepare shelters to accommodate the population to replenish food, water reserves in the context of an immediate preparation for a nuclear missile attack. Item three, notice of measures to secure medical care for the population under conditions of a nuclear counterattack. Item four, notice of preparations to evacuate specialists that might be needed for the rebuilding phase. This might look like the government commissioning people of various trades, be it in medical, military, or civil engineering, and get them to safety so that when the smoke clears, they can assist them in the rebuilding phase. Item five, a notice of measures to bring important material, valuables, and national cultural treasures to safe locations to protect them from a nuclear attack. It's very likely that this sort of activity is gonna happen so covertly that not many people are gonna notice. Item 1.1, activation of operations by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and its regional staffs. Item 1.3, the preparation and implementation of extensive exercises of civil defense systems of the United States and NATO. Item 3.2, the activation of mass blood donations. Item 3.3, the replenishment and distribution of inventories of special medications related to treating radiation sickness. Item 4.3, bringing pieces of art, national cultural monuments, and important valuable materials to safety. This might even include precious metals like gold. Item 2.2.3, the checking of filter ventilation systems and electricity supply for hermetic tightness and functioning. This would be referring to the heightened activity of maintenance of fallout shelters around the country. Item 3.1.5, the maximum release of sick people from hospitals in an attempt to free up space for a coming mass casualty event. Item 1.2, Restrictions of operations and the transfer of assets from the largest banks of the United States and other NATO countries to more neutral states like Switzerland. Item 3.3, the decentralization of civilian aircraft and marine vehicles is an attempt to mitigate and limit the damage of a preemptive nuclear strike. Item 2.2.2, an unusual mass slaughter of livestock and the procurement of food to sustain large populations for long periods of time. These are just some of the primary identifiers that the Soviet era KGB were looking for to determine whether or not the United States and NATO was planning a nuclear first strike. Let us know in the comments section below some of the things that you might expect to see in the run up to full blown nuclear war. Thanks for watching and we invite you to like, comment and subscribe on this video below. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.